Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. One of you recently sent me a message asking, how do we determine our overall length of our loaded rounds? And that's a really important question. Now back in black powder for beginners number three, I showed you this sheet right here and I said that you needed it. Well, now you do. That's the first thing that we figure out when we're gonna start load developing for a new cartridge, a new rifle. Even if you switch bullets, you have to do it all over again because every bullet is gonna have a different overall length. So I'm gonna run through this process real quick. This will be a nice short video. Come on in here and let's get after it. Okay, so before we get started, we're gonna need some stuff. Obviously, we need our load development worksheet. We need to have our micrometer. We're gonna need a razor knife, just like this one. You need a sample bullet. Um, it doesn't have to be sized or anything like that, but you do need one of, one of the bullets that you're gonna load for, okay? Every bullet, like I said before, is gonna have a different overall length most of the time. So you have to do this for every different bullet you wanna use. You're gonna need a short piece of 3 8 oak dowel, a pencil, a little bit of blue tape, and the last thing you're gonna need is a 36 inch 3 8 oak dowel. You can find this at the big box home desperation store. Um, that's a, oh, and obviously you need your rifle. Those are the things you need. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we've got here is our bullet. This one is a 590 grain money bullet that I got the mold from Buffalo Arms and it has the micro mini lube grooves and these grooves are reduced in diameter these ones up here are like 452 and 454 all the way down to the base groove here is the one that actually measures 0.459 and the reason we're doing this is so we can seat it farther out of the case and get more powder capacity in the case right and this this is a common practice with black powder loading um, we're going to determine our overall length based on where the ogive of the bullet contacts the lands of the rifling. And we want to seat this bullet into the lands of the rifling about 0 .030, 30 thousandths of an inch. Okay? And what we need to do is figure out where this thing needs to sit in order to do that. So, let's take our bullet and we're going to stick it in the chamber like so. And we're going to use our little oak dowel push it and it'll stop when it hits the lands the bullet will stop now take your trusty blue tape I just want to tack it in there I just want to make it so that I can't inadvertently bump this bullet back out when I start with the dowel so I'm going to put my blue tape just like that so that okay so from the business end of the rifle I'm going to take my oak dowel slide it in and it's going to hit the bullet nose and I've got my knife right here, and I'm gonna take and hold this razor blade as flat as I can against the muzzle of the rifle. And I'm hoping you guys can see this, but I'm gonna make a couple of rotations so that I get a nice cut in the oak dowel, and there it is right there. Now we go back to the other end of the rifle. Okay, now we come back to this end of the rifle, pull off our blue tape, can throw that away. We're going to pull the dowel out and I'm going to use the other dowel to punch the bullet back out of the chamber. We can set that aside, don't need it anymore. From here, I'm going to close the action. I don't need that hammer cocked either. And we go back to the muzzle into the rifle. Okay, so here's our dowel. We have the block closed now here's our cut we're going to stick this in all the way till it bottoms out on the on the breech block now i'm going to hold it again hold the knife again and i'm going to make another cut on my wood dowel there we go we've got our two cuts right there ha uh -huh. We're going to pull this out and measure it. Okay, so here's kind of the trickiest part of the whole thing. We've got our, I put two pencil marks here so you guys could see this a little bit better, and I measured it already. But I'm going to take my caliper 
and I'm going to stick the two points into the two cuts and it's going to give me 0 0.3195 3.42 is the number I settled on as being my closest measurement for that distance right there. Now we know that the bullet is 1.6 inches long and the case is 2.4 inches long and so that's a distance of 4 inches which is too much we only want 3.45 so that would mean that I need to have a 0 0.550 inch seating depth right the bullet needs to slide into the case 0 0.550 inches to give me 3.45 but I have to remember that I have these two wads here. Now the first one, the 0 .060 fiber wad, doesn't really count because we seat the powder, we compress the powder with that wad in place. So uh, I still have this LDPE wad, the poly wad though, which that thickness does count and it's 0 .060 inches thick. So if I add 0 0.060 to 5.50, I get 0 0.610. And that is going to be the distance that I need to see. When I seat my powder with my fiber wad on top of it, I'm going to seat it to the depth of 0 0.610 inches. Because then when I add my LDPE wad, that 0 0.60 is going to take up the remaining space and get me to 0 0.550 inches of empty case which is how deep I need to seat my bullet to make my correct overall length so that the nose of the bullet, the ogive, is 0 .030 into the lands. And this, is, this distance, this overall length is going to remain constant even when I ladder test, even when these powder charges are different. Um, that overall length will not change. That's how you get it. I hope that this helps you guys. You can email me or hit me up with a DM or a comment in the sections below if you need any further clarification, but this is how it's done. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time on Recoil Therapy. Let's give it a try. Wow. <laughs>